Magical place indeed. Rachel Blackmore couldn't have summed it up better or more beautifully, nor could she have ridden our Plutar with greater judgment as he won the Cheltenham Gold Cup. He didn't just win it either. He strode majestically up the hill to win by a margin of 15 lengths. It was the biggest winning margin since Master Oates struck in 1995. But let's not forget, it was a, a bog that year, really heavy ground. On a decent surface, it was the, the biggest winning margin almost since the days of Arkell. And he put that between himself and his stable companion, Manella Indo, from the last to the line. His champion hurdle Gold Cup double winning trainer for the second consecutive year, Henry de Bromhead, joins me on the line. Now, the problem is, Henry, um, with each passing year and each passing conversation, I have to, these introductions get longer and longer and longer and longer, but I don't suppose you mind too much. Uh, no, not at all. Not at all. Um, how did Friday compare to all the big days you've had in the last year or so? Yeah, look, it was obviously right up there. Um, Aplutard was um, really good. So was Indo. I thought he ran an absolute cracker as well. I suppose, um, you know, Tuesday was pretty massive as well with Honey. So, um, look, it's right up there. And, um, yeah, just uh, brilliant, really. Delighted for Rachel and, and for everyone involved. Um, yeah, I suppose the difference, just having the crowd there, compared to the previous year and having all connections and everyone involved there made it even more special. So we've talked quite a bit about Rachel's judgment, um, the fact that she wanted to leave it as late as possible on Aplutar to really maximise that enormous bucket load of ability we know he's got. How do you in your own mind rationalise the result this year compared to the result last year? What were the differences for you? Um, I didn't think Rachel had done a whole lot wrong the previous year but she seems to be convinced that she had got involved too soon and um, so I must I mean obviously just um, sitting uh, that bit longer and I suppose just saving his turn of foot um, I mean turning in it looked like Indo was gone and, and and you know he was putting the race to bed but just the way Abdutard picked him up was incredible um, so yeah, you know, I, I, to be honest, I haven't, after that, I haven't really, um, you know, sort of <laughs> processed it much more than that. But, uh, I was slightly surprised Indo didn't gallop to the line. Um, so we might run a few checks on him as well, just to make sure everything's all right. But, um, but look, it was, after that, his performance was, uh, was incredible, yeah. Yeah, it was it was spectacular. To what extent do you think that extra bit of freshness played in his favour? You you were quite you were quite clear on that at Christmas time that you felt you needed to give him a bit longer. Yeah, I mean, well, we did that the previous year, so mm -hmm. it was similar. So, um, uh, but yeah, look, it it, it seemed to nearly worked the previous year so everyone involved was happy to do that again and um, obviously he's a year older he's stronger you know he's, he's still only eight and uh, maybe that helps him a bit as well you know so um, um, yeah look I, I, I can't really say but um, just delighted yeah now is it fair to say that you were you were trying to turn this horse into a champion chaser for a while I was, yeah. I've got a, I've got a <laughs> habit of trying to do that. Um, hey, it's, and, well, to be fair, um, it's, worked, it's worked quite a few times, so I can see why. <laughs> yeah, I suppose it has. Yeah, I'm um, just starting to wonder what the others could have done. But um, yeah, you know, he had a lot. He had a lot of speed there. That probably threw us a bit. Um, the Chacon Persoir race when he beat him at Leopardstown at Christmas a few years ago, and we sort of. So we went for the Ryanair that year, and um, uh, you know, just after jumping the, he so they quickened away from him. I think it was Min quickened away from him. It was just after the last. So it was still a bit lost as to which way to go. But you could just suddenly see him staying on again a bit, and um, so the following year we tried stepping him up uh, in the Savills, and he went and won. Yeah. Uh, so the obvious question now is not whether he comes back to defend his crown because that's a given. It's a question of whether you you go again this season. Are, are you inclined to or not? Well, I suppose we have that right and left-handed thing. Um, 
and he definitely look I can't say for sure he's still like that but I don't think anyone's too pushed to try him right handed so having spoken to Richard Thompson yesterday I would say we'll leave it for, for this season um, and we'll aim towards um, the Betfair chase next year and sort of follow the same route um, that, that was um, what we sort of discussed yesterday I, I can't say that is definite, but I think we were certainly leaning towards that. And what about Minella Indo? He, he's run now, strung together two excellent performances, particularly given the disappointment over Christmas. Do you sort of feel there's a, there's a big day in him this season that he deserves? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, he's, he's, um, he, ran an, he ran a cracker as well. Um, and um, I, I would and now again I haven't discussed it with, with the Maloney's but I would imagine we'd all be keen to go to Pontius Town he has a good record around there um, uh, once he's okay like I say we'll just r check him out as well but once he's okay I'd imagine um, we'll, we'll um, hopefully aim for that that would be it would be great to see him back I mean just at the beginning of the interview you were saying you were surprised he didn't gallop all the way to the line I was kind of working on the base I thought he maybe had run as well as he as he had last year are you sort of working on your instincts a little bit yeah no possibly you know absolutely I'm not saying he didn't you know I you know I suppose look that that's more I suppose when you see what's behind him um you know I, I just think it's it just it seems unlike him um to um you know, he really needed the line. That that you know, I'm not used to seeing that with him. But um, it's only being ultra, you know, cautious and just just make sure that um, he is he is 100. percent You know, so no, I wouldn't like to take anything away from the winner either. Uh, if, on form, on figures, he probably did. You know, and maybe just holding up KPT and being a year older, he just um, he just you know. I don't know, really, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, it, it wasn't lost on, on any of us, I don't think, that we'd spent quite a long time, and, and you addressed it yourself in this interview last week, uh, saying that, yeah, the horses had been running all right, but they weren't exactly firing on every cylinder coming into the, into the meeting. The record books won't care, will they? It'll just say another one, two in the Gold Cup and a, and a, and a victory in, in, the, in the champion hurdle. Yeah. Yeah, which is incredible, you know. So, and... and like they all looked amazing and seemed to be, you know, a, a lot of them ran really well. There were obviously a couple of disappointments. I thought Bob, it's a terrible thing to say, but he was very disappointing. Um, Rachel said he made a very strange noise after he jumped the fourth last and she just felt the, you know, he just started to empty after that. So, um, we definitely need to check that out. That might just be something, you know, an individual thing for him. Um, but look, we have to go and dig into these things and just make sure, you know, we have them all um, as best as we possibly can. You you doubled down a little bit on that the last couple of days, the the Bob Ollinger thing, and I know you didn't want to be unsporting on on Thursday, but the idea that he was very disappointing is, is that based on really just the feeling that he gave Rachel? Because we were sort of talking about this with Nico de Boinville earlier on the. the the way that you get these kind of freakishly good horses can actually make very good horses look less than they really are. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I never... Before I spoke to Rachel, I didn't believe any horse could make Bob Ollinger look like that. And again, without taking too much away from what Gallop and Deschamps was going to do... Um, I, having spoken to Rachel and r watched the race again, I firmly believe, you know, he wasn't right. Um, you know, we all saw him, the way he finished up that hill, um, like, the way he finishes any of his races. Mm. And he, he could barely trot up the hill this year. Yeah. Um, and But then, having spoken to Rachel and she said he made this noise and he just emptied on her, that confirmed it, and um, yeah, we've got to just check it out. You know, he was stiff and sore when he got home, so yeah, we just he booked in for plenty of tests this week, and we'll see. Which, is, which sounds, you know, it's probably one of the most disappointing Grade Ones we've ever won, 
but um, but look, that's the reality of it, and we have to you know try and get him back to his best. Okay, so it, would it uh, is it likely then that he's 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 not going to run again this season? No, I wouldn't like to say that for sure. We'll we'll run our tests and see. It might be something simple. I I don't know. We need to just get him yeah. checked out, and sure. we'll see from there. Okay. Is there any little bit of you that is half thinking about turning him back to Hurdley? Um, not really, no. I thought he jumped really well um, in the main. He's not. You know what? He jumps very similar to Apple Tard, in my opinion. He, he gets from A to B. He doesn't. He's not extravagant. And um, I thought he jumped really well for the first circus. And he made one. He put down at one when when Rachel um when she was looking for a bigger one he just put down on her and other than that I I thought I mean look I have to watch it again it's all you know um I haven't looked at it closely but I I, I was sort of happy with his jumping he's he's a sort of you know he's never going to be a big extravagant jumper but you know I think if you're going three miles that's uh that's not you know it's not an issue really um he just gets from A to B, and to say he's slow is sort of ridiculous, uh, in my opinion. He was yeah. as quick as anything um, popping those fences the other day. You just don't get those big, extravagant jumps with him. Um, uh, th- there's nothing to be too disappointed in, in put the kettle on, put the kettle on uh, uh, about. I mean, she's, she's won two Cheltenham Festival races. Uh, what, what, do, you, do you have a plan with her? I haven't really, we, we've discussed it briefly after the race and, and I haven't actually spoken to the Darmadies since, so I don't. Um, look, she, yeah, she was disappointing on the day. Um, I thought things started to fall right for her as the race unfolded. And, um, you know, yeah, look, I, yeah, I wouldn't like to make, it was, but it was disappointing and she's had a couple of disappointing runs. So I think we need to have a chat about it and see what everyone wants to do. Um, she's obviously an extremely valuable brood mare, and uh, and she's put her heart on the line so many times. So I, I you know, I I want to see what everyone wants mm-hmm. to do. Maybe we want to give her a couple of more runs and see, or or not. I'm not sure. We need to discuss it and and, and decide from there. And let's round off on on the greatest high, uh, honeysuckle defending her her champion hurdle crown. Did this give you a a richer sense of satisfaction than than before. Uh, it struck me that it did somehow. Yeah, it really did. It really did. It was, you know, any of the winners from last year, you wanted them to get that roar. And but her especially, I just think she really deserved it. Um, she got it in the mare's hurdle, obviously. But I don't know. I just. I, every, you know, I just felt she really deserved it, and it was incredible. Um, she's just uh, an incredible mare, and yeah, it was uh, it was one of the best days we've ever had. I think, yeah. And is she okay? Yeah, she's great. Not a bother on her. Yeah, not a bother on her. And what? How do you view this this potential matchup between? Between her and the supreme novices hurdle winner at Punchestown, if if it happens, oh look, it'd be brilliant. It's what racing's about, isn't it? You know, it's trying to, you know, it's, it, like that's what it's about. I think it'd be fantastic if Michael's brave enough to take us on. Fair play to him. And- <laughs> <laughs> that's a joke. <laughs> oh dear, I fear you might have just written tomorrow's headline. Um, <laughs> I, what interests me is that obviously he's laid it all out there with his with his massive figure in the Supreme Novices, you know, in a race that was pretty much designed to produce a massive time. We've heard from Nico and Nicky. We, you know, we know this horse is clearly an absolute freak and one of the best novices we've seen for years and years, if not, you know, in, in sort of post-war history. She just keeps winning, keeps winning by a long way. To win that many races on the trot is just bizarre and outstanding in itself is there a sense that you think that you say freak about honey or did you say freak about both both really i mean yeah yeah yeah. he's he's done something really unusual in terms of performance like she's won 15 you know yeah well she's been pretty impressive in most of her races as well so just yeah 
definitely freak can be associated with her as well. So be careful, yeah. Yeah, and and here's the, but here's yeah. here's here's where I want to go here because yeah, I'm wondering whether say say we've got a new kid on the block who's got really rare and unusual talent, the extent to which he can push her to an even higher plane. So similar I, talent, similar talent to Honey, which is really well, rare and unusual. Mm, yeah, maybe not. Maybe he's not as good as her. Who knows? What I'm asking well, I, you, I'm Henry. I'm not saying he's not, but I would definitely be using all those same. That yeah. Same terminology to describe Honey as well because yeah. So what I think we have what, to keep looking back at her record and you know so I'm not sure you all give her the um, <laughs> you know you appreciate her as much as you possibly should. So um, just you know she's what she's achieved is like no other horse has ever achieved it. So uh, yeah, just have so, to remember that. So here's, the, here's what I'm getting at. What I'm getting at is that if there is a horse, the like of which she hasn't yet met in her career, i.e. if there's a better one than the ones that she's been beating so far, do you believe, given what you know about her and what you've seen of her, that the effect of that will simply push her performance level even higher? It will, we will simply be able to see then an, a, a yet elevated performance from her. Yeah, I, I, like I, I can't say she's. I wouldn't dare to say she's going to beat. Uh, you know, con, I, I, you know, I don't know. Like I, I can't answer that. But she, she's what she's achieved is way beyond. You know, a lot of horses, and um, obviously Constitution Hill was extremely impressive. Um, all his figures were unreal, but you know she's. Being constant, you know, she she's just so consistently at the top. You know, uh, she's like, yeah. I mean, who knows? I can't answer who'd win it, obviously. But um, but I think it'll be fascinating if they if they do take us on, and um, won't it be amazing for the sport? Uh, absolutely. I, and the the one uh, the one thing we disagree on here is that I think she really is appreciated, and I think people do. Absolutely, love it. You only had to hear. Well, the I think the public the do, but uh, I mean, I, I, sorry, I, I know. I don't think I know the public do, but uh, I, don't, yeah, you know, I certainly do. Yeah, absolutely. You know, when when you hear Willie Mullen saying Benny DeJew is possibly the best mare he's ever trained, you know, and and she beats her, and you know, she's she's won two. Tri- I mean, I don't need to go through it all. She um, she deserves as much, if not more, recognition than any horse. You know. Well. Go and give her another pat from us. Um, and I really appreciate your time this morning. Another great week. Henry, thanks so much. Thanks, Nick. Thanks so much.